Hello from the BBC World Service and welcome to the latest edition of the Documentary Podcast. Every week we bring you a range of stories from our presenters and reporters across the world. If you have the time, please rate the documentary on your podcast app and leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. It's December. It's the end of 2017. And the sun is setting on marriage equality. But that doesn't matter yet. Because I'm at the Air and Space Museum. Sitting in a giant dome that is a 360 degree screen. And without motion sickness, or flight school, or barely pass psych tests. I am an instant astronaut, floating in outer space. My name is Tiffany Painter. I am a spoken word artist, or as Audre Lorde would say, a black lesbian woman poet warrior. (laughs) I'm here in Hamilton, Bermuda, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. That was a poem I wrote titled God Gap. I wanted to use my anger, my sadness, and to use my hope. In May of 2017, the Supreme Court of Bermuda ruled in favor of marriage equality, which would allow basically everyone, gay or straight, the right to marry in Bermuda. Then... A new government was elected, and soon this government decided to put forward the Domestic Partnership Act, which would strip the LGBT community, transgenders, queers, everyone of their right to marry. Bermuda, a lot of misconceptions about Bermuda. You have the triangle, you have people asking us if we live in huts. But basically, Bermuda is the most expensive place in the world to live. It's surrounded by beaches, this tiny 21 miles. And it's one of the most beautiful places you will ever, ever visit. If you believe in God, if you believe in some type of creator, it's heaven on earth. My name is Josh Correa. I'm a gay Bermudian and I do some work with the Rainbow Alliance here in Bermuda. Right now we're in Hamilton, Bermuda, which is the capital city of the island, at the corner of Front Street and Queen Street. It's where... I had an incident happen to me several years ago, walking to meet some friends at a bar at about 9 p.m. on a Thursday evening. A car drove by with two young men hanging out the window, and they both yelled some very derogatory comments towards me and then threw an empty glass bottle at me. I didn't report it because my feelings were, well, there's no real law in Bermuda to protect me as a gay person, Why am I going to bother causing a big stink about anything? You will never know the answer to how many people are actually LGBTQ plus in Bermuda. Because Bermuda has such an ingrained culture of homophobia on the island. There are certain places on the island where it would not be safe for members of the LGBTQ community to go and be their true selves. So Bermuda is this weird, weird place where they call this place the Devil's Isle. That's like our nickname. When the first sailors came here, they thought it was screaming. The sound of the birds and the cajals that were inhabiting the island. So they thought, oh man, this is a place of ghosts where the devil must live. 
So on this devil's aisle, we have more churches per square mile, they say, than anywhere else in the world. So I want to welcome you to Wesley Methodist Church here on Church Street in Hamilton in Bermuda. We actually just celebrated our 108th anniversary. My name is Adrian, full name for the record, Adrian Layton Hartnett Beasley. It's a mouthful. Um, It's my husband's fault. (laughs) We uh, (laughs) couldn't agree on whose name to choose, so we ended up compromising, which means that no one's happy. And uh, (laughs) my parents got married here. My brother and my sister got married here. And then when Shane and I applied to have just a blessing here, not a marriage, it ended up in a congregational vote. Nothing like sitting there and literally watching people put up their hands. It's pretty sobering. When it was proved, there were people that said, well, I'm not coming back anymore. Adrian is a lawyer and deputy chairman of the charity Out Bermuda. Do you consider yourself openly gay? Yeah. Oh, yes. Very openly gay. Super gay. I didn't know I was gay until I went to university. There was no one that I actually was able to identify with, so it's no wonder that there was so much confusion for me. For people here in Bermuda, it is an act of bravery to be open And how do you marry the two, being gay and Christian, considering that so many of the opponents to marriage equality use the Bible to justify their stance? I spent many years having difficulty reconciling the two. But I think Shane and I, we do not believe that being gay and being Christian are mutually exclusive. Christianity is built on the premise of loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and then loving your neighbors yourself. So why was it important personally for you to get married? I really need an excuse to wear more diamonds, (laughs) which I am. (laughs) For me and Shane, we both always wanted to get married. It wasn't like, oh, should we or shouldn't we? And what crystallized for us was when we brought Grayson home from the hospital when he was four days old. For the opposers of marriage equality, well, what do you do with a couple like me and Shane who have a kid? And quite honestly, we live in a world where marriage is important for inheritance rights, visitation, so many other things. Al Bermuda did a poll for voting aged Bermudians. And one of the statistics that we found that we were surprised by was the very high number of Bermudians that either work with or know in a personal capacity an LGBTQ plus person. Because that statistic is normally very low in other countries. And so that's another interesting dynamic that you have to deal with. In 2016, the Bermuda government held a referendum asking the population if they were in favor of either same-sex marriage, same-sex partnerships, or both, or neither. Around 65% of people who voted said no to both same-sex marriage and civil partnerships. But only 46% on the island actually voted. So the referendum was non-binding. In January 2017, a team of lawyers headed by Mark Pettengill and his client Winston Godwin launched a legal case to obtain marriage equality. And they won. I went along to meet Winston and his husband, Greg, but they didn't make it easy for me. Hi. (laughs) It was so hard to find this place. Your directions were horrible. There were no directions. I've never been on this road in my life. And you're still on Bermudian terms, like, on time, so. (laughs) All right, let's go inside. All right. I'm Greg DeRoche. And I'm Winston Godwin. We met in Toronto, Canada, and we have been, I guess, inseparable ever since. (laughs) Marriage is just something we both wanted, even prior to us getting together. It's just something at least I've always seen in my life. What went into your decision to make it a court case? The decision that we based it off of was, why not? This is something that's so much bigger than us. 
and what it meant for people other than ourselves. How did it feel that day in court when you won? Did you think you were going to win? I was kind of nervous. The biggest thing I felt was relief. In the courtroom, I actually ended up crying. So many people are told that they're less than, and having the win on our side, it shows other LGBT Bermudians that you are important. It's literally just a law, but it means so much more than it being a law. So after you won, do you think that the people from Preserve Marriage immediately got to work taking away that right? Or Honestly, and kind of naively, I thought it was done. Like, who'd have thought that people would fight so hard to stop love? The problems come when you're giving people time to enjoy the something and you're taking it away. My analogy was going to go with like the Olympic gold medal and that just be taken away and like, ah, actually, maybe more of a silver or bronze for you instead for no reason. I guess along with that, it's like no other country has done that. So it should kind of give pause to Bermuda to say, hey, is this something we really want to do? On the other side, on the preserved marriage side, some will say that this is forcing us, forcing a change on Bermuda that it wasn't ready for. The bill isn't forcing them to do anything. They have all the protections needed to say, I don't want to conduct your LGBT wedding because I don't believe in it. We've heard a lot so far from one side of the story, mainly the people that it affects. I want to ensure anyone listening out there that our intention was to sit down with those on the other side of this argument, on the side of preserved marriage, on the side of churches that disagree with marriage equality, and hear them out, even the ministers that voted for the Domestic Partnership Act. But we have only been met with closed doors or voicemails or unanswered emails. It's unclear to me why exactly no one is really willing to go on record as to their position. But we did try to paint a full and complete picture of the whole story here. Since we weren't able to get anyone interviewed... I wanted to share a clip from a 2016 press conference and just give Preserved Marriage the ability to speak for themselves. And now Dr. Darling will share with you why we exist. We firmly believe this union celebrates the necessary natural differences between a male and a female to procreate, fosters moral integrity, strengthens the family unit, and therefore our society. And for these reasons, we are opposed to same-sex marriage in Bermuda. One Bermudian senator did give us some insight into the politics of the island. My name is Andrew Simons. I am an opposition senator for the One Bermuda Alliance. This is the chamber of the House of Assembly. Being here after hours is a nice respite from... I really say the nastiness that can be present, certainly when the House of Assembly is in session. I think the political ructions in the UK and the US are relevant in Bermuda as well. So populist politics works. Our constitution has weaknesses that have made certain populations on the island vulnerable. To listeners who are trying to understand how Bermuda one minute has marriage equality and the next minute it's been taken away, you must understand that there was no vote in Parliament explicitly granting marriage rights. Politicians don't like to make unpopular decisions. Instead, there were court cases that challenged the existing marriage laws, and those court challenges relied on the Human Rights Act. And the courts agreed, so they made those discriminatory sections inoperative. Voila, we have marriage equality. So to undo that work, legislation was passed in the guise of a Domestic Partnerships Act that gave the Marriage Act primacy over the human rights legislation. That's how we quickly moved from equality 
backwards. I voted against the domestic partnerships because the government was trying to substitute full equality for second-class citizenship. The government certainly had the votes to pass that legislation, but they did it very quickly. The practical consequence of that is that the civil society organizations had very little time to organize any meaningful opposition. You're listening to Bermuda's Change of Heart on the BBC World Service. And this is following how Bermuda are the only jurisdiction to repeal same-sex marriage. I did try long and hard to speak to a member of the current government that voted against marriage equality. I actually got the number of Walton Brown, but, well, here's what happens when I call. Please leave a message and I'll get back to you. Walton Brown was one of the key politicians who, if I had been able to talk to him, I would have liked to discuss why he feels the Domestic Partnership Act was a way to bring compromise to Bermuda. The Human Rights Amendment Act 2017 speaks about making... Since we didn't get to speak to a representative from the government, here is a clip of MP Wayne Ferbert on why he brought in the domestic partnership legislation. The reason why we did this, because we have been called, text, stopped on the street and said, do something. And so we didn't feel that we should abrogate our responsibility. The courts went as far as, as it did. Parliament has always been supreme, uh, just below the Constitution, long we're not doing anything outside of the Constitution. But we should, at the end of the day, speak on behalf of the people. We did try to speak to people in Bermuda to get them to weigh in on where they stood on the issue, but we were met with people just shaking their heads, no, not even responding, and most just kept on walking which I guess is a testament to how sensitive the issue really is in our country. What are you looking for? Chancery Hall? The next one. Okay, the green I am on my way to meet Mark Pettingo. He is the former attorney general in Bermuda and the lawyer who took Winston's case for marriage equality to court. Hi. Hi. Good how are you? morning. Mark Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come on in. Why did you agree to take on the case? I mean, who wouldn't? I just found it to be a total abomination in this day and age. So are there any crucial rights denied to the LGBTQ community under the Domestic Partnership Act that were available to them under marriage? I hate to do it on the basis of that if the relationship falls apart, but adultery under the Domestic Partnership Act is not a cause to dissolve or divorce, whereas if you're married, it is. And then there are a number of other issues that run from that with regard to property rights and all the rest of it. One minor example is the Domestic Partnership Act draws the line at 18, whereas you can legally marry at 16. There are distinctions. The charity Out Bermuda have launched a legal case, and lawyer Mark Pettengill is now preparing a second legal case with another client, which will take place towards the end of May. My name is Roderick Ferguson. I am a Bermudian living in New York, and I am the client in the legal case to challenge Bermuda's repealed same-sex marriage. What was it like growing up here? Did you know you were gay? I was definitely bullied before I knew. Uh, <laughs> and I, it wasn't until I was in senior two that I realized that there was a sexual attraction thing going on towards men, and that absolutely terrified me. So you struggled to accept your sexuality at first? That would imply that I was trying to accept it. Did you have to come out to your family? Uh, I did it in a, I don't know, to me looking back it seems the easiest way, but it included a suicide attempt, so... Um, but it made it a lot easier because, you know, it was sort of like, Mom, Dad, I'm not coming home for spring break because I'm in a mental hospital because I tried to kill myself because I'm in love with Charlie. 
I've done that healing and I am completely unashamed of who I am. So that's why I am in a position to do something this publicly. If I wait for being gay to be accepted, I'll just wait forever. And I recognize that someone had to fight it. We have more rights here than some other places, but only because of court cases like mine. This is Beach House at Marley Beach. I have lived here for 30 years? 38. 38 years, oh my God, where the time goes. And Christopher and I have been here together for... A long time. Apparently. A long time. A long time. And so, so this is so this is home. My name is Joe Gibbons, and uh, I'm a born Bermudian. My name is Christopher Vanderheiden. I'm married to Joe Gibbons, and I've been on the island for 13 years. We got married in Toronto, of course, because the law didn't permit us to get married in Bermuda. Would you like the tour? Tour through. This is great for entertaining in the summer. The outdoor patio right here. In fact, in this house. Going way back, once a month, on a Wednesday night, between 8 and midnight, anybody who was gay was welcome to come here. We would maybe get 80 or 90 people. And this was a safe haven for gays in Bermuda to come and to socialize. When the Marriage Act was overturned, I won't say I was surprised. It's part and parcel of the reason that it's not the, the sole reason, though, so I won't say that, that we have decided now to leave Bermuda and to take up residence outside. And that's a very difficult decision. I was born and raised where my family is here. But for us to guarantee our future relationship and how we want to live our lives, the government, either political party, not really that interested in protecting our long-term rights. When the Marriage Act was passed... Such a, an incredible day, you just felt this burden lift and you just feel, okay, equality is coming. And then it all came crashing down once that was taken away. Fighting seems to be the natural thing in Bermuda. Each interest group must fight for what it wants. This has to be squeezed out of Bermuda. Every good and bad or ill or woe you have everywhere else in the world is here. We're just a little microcosm of this huge macro global complexity of human relationship. But it's also a place where people are too polite sometimes. Polite to the point of being silent and complicit And so you have a situation in Bermuda where it's 2018 and we're being told by a majority black government that this bill makes us separate but equal. My name is Linda Monitor. I am a very proud Bermudian, an out lesbian. What are the non-religious reasons Bermudians are against same-sex marriage. Honestly, for me in the black community, they see it more as something for white people, that we've got bigger issues. The black community has always felt that that government never turned its attention to the economic plight of black people in this country. If you're in the black community and you feel that you're under a government that only looks at business and the global community and the white community and how we believe that they've prospered under that government, then you feel that any issues that are specifically related to concerns of white people are not your concerns. And so they take the human rights out of it and only look at any time you see a rally for the LGBT community, all you see is white people. So that's a white issue. We're going to turn our eye away from that, even if we believe that it's wrong. When I, as a black person, feel discriminated against as a gay person, It feels the same to me. As you and I know, if they only knew how many black people are gay or bisexual or part of the LGBT community, they would be shocked. 
the majority of people that live an openly out life seem to be more white people. It is far more difficult for a black person to come out in this country. You know, just speaking with Linda, I didn't expect to be so moved or touched. How she was saying, it it feels the same. When I'm discriminated against because I'm black, it feels the same as when I'm discriminated against because I'm gay. Throughout history, we have seen how the idea that some humans' lives are more valuable or right than others continues to persist in dangerous and destructive ways, whether that is taking a life at the end of a gun or denying a man or woman the right to live in happiness as a married couple. So, I don't know. I don't know what the final word will be on any of this at all, but that's what I have to say. Bermuda's Change of Heart was presented by myself, Tiffany Painter. The producer was Anishka Sharma, and it's a Whistle Down production for the BBC World Service. Thank you for listening. There will be more from the documentary podcast soon. This week, the BBC World Service and Norway's NRK have launched a new podcast called Death in Ice Valley. We have given you a preview all about it. It's about an investigation attempting to find out about the life of a woman whose body was found in Norway in 1970. The investigation is ongoing and is asking for the help of podcast listeners – You can download the first episode now. Search for Death in Ice Valley wherever you find your podcasts.